into my rambling quite this long either. Um, what I wanted to look at today briefly is Tales from the Loop, the official um, Foundry system. Um, I've been running this for a little while, um, probably about I don't know, 10 or 12 sessions of this, the four seasons of Mad Science, which I included here in this in the core rulebook. And I've run the Recycled Boy, which is the starter kit. So I'm going to have a look at both of those. And I'm going to man uh, mention things from the flood. And I might, depending when I need to be going for dinner, um, I might also show you what I had done with things from the flood previously and how that works. So let's have a look through this then. Um, and I know this is offline, so I'm not going to wait for any questions. I've imported the, the system already. So this is the, the home screen. I love the, the art. Um, I always do, especially for Tales from the uh, from from the Loop, but also things from the Flood. And then you get the nice colors, and then you get the gray frame. So I would change that frame as, as, as soon as possible. We've got padding on here again, and if you look at like this, this looks like, I don't know. And that's not 1980s, no, it's, it's more sort of East German art than West German art. Yeah, it's, you've got a nice bit of art, and you put it in that turret of it frame <clears throat> excuse me so what you get in here is you um, get the loop core rule book and the loop starter set if you buy both of them and I would recommend going for both and the recycled boys are really good adventure by itself and you've got some pregens in there which you do not have at all in the core rule book best starting point is the welcome screen that typically after you've imported this will pop up and that's your your um, table of content and it's fully linked you can see all the little books here yeah so it's fully linked it hops across you see the the different um, integrations here of the images and of the the art already some of it is a bit squeezed so we've got something here that probably takes 80 or maybe 90 percent of the um the width of the window as a graphics asset and squeezes the text a little bit. That's yeah, a bit unfortunate, but clumsy looking. Maybe it's just there on that particular one. But yeah, you've got the um, lovely art and you've got the cutouts. So I probably would prefer reading this on paper rather than on the screen, but you've got it all there if you need it. You've got the uh, archetypes and they are better laid out. So it ex explains, especially during character creation, you will want to make this available to the uh, to your players so they can see what archetypes they're in. And a lot of these things are really more for, for inspiration than hard, and hard set rules. But they're constant, uh, they're always linked to the rules concept, how that works. So you get some more examples here and how that actually plays out in a game. So that's really nice to have that link here. Okay, um, you have also got the mystery. This is not actually a mystery. This bit here is all about how you would construct a mystery as such. So for the uh, for the games master, this is a really, really important thing to read. Because you need to know how to run it and how to set it up. You then, after that, have the mystery landscape. There's two of these included. Oh, they're pretty much the same anyway. One is in the Malaran Islands. Uh, Malaran Lake, I should say, um, just not too far from Stockholm, actually. The other one is um, Colorado, Boulder and Colorado, and you've got the descriptions of some, the main sites here. Um, I've heard of English teachers who've bought this book, gave it in, in excerpts, this Mr. Landscape, to their kids and say, here is the input for, for creative writing. And apparently they have got some really good results. It was featured, I'm a teacher, it was featured on one of the, the teaching websites as an inspirational resource. So I thought that was really fun. And then you've got the four seasons of math science and I've run one, two, and three. Oh, I prepped, but I never ran it because I ran uh, things from the flood instead. Out of the three I ran, by far my favorite was Summer uh, Break and Killer Birds. We had a real laugh with that scenario, and you can play that out very nicely. So give it a read. If you've got this module and you, you're just thinking, oh, hmm, I'm just going to run my own stuff, it's definitely worth reading that, even just for inspiration. OK, so we've got all the different sections here of the book. Um, you've seen the table of contents, but to go into this a little bit more, yeah, I think you can read that. That's probably big enough. Go on bigger. Yeah. 
Um, you've got the entries here, text and denos, US loop. Let's go for the US loop. Yeah, so I, I modified this to USA loop because I was testing something. You can ignore that. You get the short descriptions in here. That's good. Um, living in America yeah, in the 1980s, it was a very, very different time. Oh, we look at that. It's just complete random. VHS and Betamax, for example. Yeah, 10 TV shows. I remember all of those showing my age. Um, you get information about the location, the Hoover Dam, Lake Mead. Yeah, so this the length of these, these are long enough to just quickly find what you're looking for. Um, but short enough to not get lost in them. Okay. Um, right. What this is very light on, because of the rule system it is, for, for instance, is roll tables. You can see there's no roll tables included in this, but you don't really need them for this game. It's not that sort of game. Items. There's one item in this data set, and that's it. Everything else you basically make up on the spot. Yeah, you want to have a yo-yo? Yeah, have a yo-yo. You want to have a skateboard? Yeah, fine. We all know how a skateboard works. You don't need to have stats for a skateboard. Yeah? Weapons don't feature in this game. Oh, not really, as something you would use, and kids can't die. So, I made a couple of um, characters on this one as well. Ah, right. You can see by the color scheme, I still have a module installed that I or enabled that I shouldn't have enabled. Let me just take that off. Oh, it's a style sheet more than anything else. So, if I go to my test character, this is a typical character. Yeah, you can. Um, very swiftly distribute your points on here. It takes very little time to do the stats for your character creation. You spend a little more time on, on things over here, defining your, your drive, your anchor, what problem you might have, what pride you might have, favorite song. Yeah, some players might actually have to do some research what was hot in the 80s then, but probably know a few of them. You can have an iconic item. Really should be up here, an iconic one. So my yo-yo could go in there. And any other items, it's a question of just going on the plus and say, I also have a Walkman. So I was rich. Yeah, I never had a Walkman, really. I had a, a knockoff equivalent. Or oh, I have a pen knife. And depending whether you get a an item bonus or not for it, that's it. And that's why you don't have any items in your item list. You don't need them. Hideout is here, your base. Um, yeah, I probably would have one hideout sheet in the journals that I shared with everybody because it's like one hideout for the whole group. Not each of the players has got their own hideout. But that's a system thing, not a, a content module thing. And you've got some room for extra notes here. You've got a whole page yeah, which you can use the, the sm small editor as well. Um, what I find interesting is here you've got the archetypes. Um, they're the same archetypes as in the rulebook for Players from the Loop. There is the facility I noticed in the settings for this uh, module settings. System settings, sorry. System settings. It says kit type editor. And I was expecting that I can add some kit types on there, but when I click on it, it does nothing. And I haven't looked at the console yet. What happens if I do this? Kit type editor, log layout console. It then says reference error data is not defined. Yeah. Um, detected one package, it's trying to get some data. Yeah, extended settings on click submenu, go somewhere else, and that's where it fails. So it's trying to look for something that is missing. Don't know what it is. Um, there's also this tick box to say use additional kit types in France in the 80 supplement. I haven't got that. But let's see whether that does anything. Hmm. Refresh it. While it's refreshing, this is actually running off my local Raspberry Pi. Let's see whether I can create my character now. Yeah, we've got a couple more now. Yeah, so resourceful show off inventor and role player. I think they're the new ones. I would be interested to see what they are. But one of the reasons why I mention this is um, that for me, things from the Flood and Tales from the Loop are very much the same game. And the way it's currently set up, especially if you look at the, the ages of the character, you limit to age 15. And 
the things from the flat goes to 1718. Um, so you can't actually really easily put that in here. You can, of course, ignore the age up here and just put something on in your notes and say, actually, I'm 16. So it's not a big deal. But the only other difference in the character sheet is um, that the, te uh, the teens have shames rather than prides. But the gameplay is very much the same. So the archetypes here are different. The ages is different, but not, nothing here drives anything mechanical. So you can still play it. It's just that. And I showed you briefly the effect of that um, Things from the Flood module, which basically colors this differently. I'm pretty sure there's actually a way that it um, changes the ages as well, because when I did a clean install without the Tales from the Loop um, content sets, I was able to go to age 17 and have the other types in there. So there's some conflict between those two modules. But as I said, it's not a big deal. Um, items we had to look at, uh, scenes. You know by now, if you've watched a couple of my videos, that I'm relatively picky about my scenes. So, for example, here we have a cover picture, or a nice bit of, of a starter set cover picture here. I've got that starter set as well. Role playing in the 18s, 80s that never was, fair enough. And then we've got the framer. I would suggest, and this is only suggestion, your mileage may vary, to go and remove first of all the back, and then do the background color. Doesn't have to be black, but white is just glare. I don't want that. Right, and now I've cut something off. Um, question is why that hasn't happened before. Let's give it some padding back, because it might be that the tile is too big. Yeah, that's better. At least, yeah, there is padding, but you can't see it because the black um, background basically eats up that line, that frame line. So for me, that looks better already. We have the islands. Melaren Islands. Um, I believe Stockholm is off to the bottom right. I'd love to go, though. My brother recently moved up to Uppsala. Well, I'd like to go and visit him at some point. So very much, yeah... Quality-wise, when you get close to about what, something like three by three of these map squares, it starts to get a bit pixelated. Yeah, but that's probably the same sort of quality that I got when I imported my own map. You've got the the bright whites around again. I would get rid of it. You know, you know me by now. Boulder, Colorado looks like pretty much the same, same sort of quality. Yeah, so it starts getting pixelated there. Again, not a big deal. It's an overview map. Most of the time you'll be at about this zoom level, I suppose. But I also noticed that there are some things marked on here, the cooling towers and the boat, but they are baked into it in the bunker lady. Um, they seem to be yeah locations that are basically hard-coded into the map. We've got a couple of other things. I don't want to really talk about it a lot in case I spoil anybody, but these are the, the sites um, that they, the players can explore. Again, I don't like the white, you know that. Um, boat, I have actually modified already, so here it had a white surround, but for me this looks better. Bank and shoulder, I leave out. And then we come back to this. So they are the scenes. That's pretty much all the scenes we've got included. Now, there are a few more scenes if you look at the scenarios. Yeah, but again, I don't really want to spoil them for anybody. But basically, if it's in the book, it's going to be in here. Yeah. What I noticed really is, um, for my players, those core locations from the mystery landscape, I have included them on the map, either for myself or for the players, so I can show you that in a minute um, in my own instance. But um, again... Doesn't take long, does it? Yeah, so if I go back to Malaran Islands and go to Stenhamra, for example, one of the things is a teenager, so they're going to go to school, right? So there's information about the school in here. If you want to go to school, school library, I would track that across. I would put it where the school is. It's about there. I would give it an, um, a different... Yeah, different... Let's just go for house for now. Actually, the school library is not bad for a book, is it? That works quite nicely. Let's leave that. Make it slightly bigger, maybe. 
Right, and uh, basically I've got backgroundless pins installed and I've got pincushion installed and I've enabled the preview. So what happens here is um, with the icon, if I now go over it, I get the preview. So I can double click on it and it opens it. Or I can hover over it and get that. Usually in Foundry as vanilla, um, as soon as I go away from the bookmark on my left menu here, all the, the token or the, the markers disappear. But there's another module called show notes. Basically that makes it persistent and don't disappear. So that's three modules already working together. Background is pins, pin cushion and show notes. And if you've got game icons, .NET installed, or you would grab the icons of their of their website. You can have lots and lots of different um, um, icons here. So if you want to ever change the icon for something, double right click should work. I don't know why it's not working right now. Or well, you can just very easily get rid of that. Oh, hang on. So why it doesn't work? Yeah. So double right click with the bookmark there. And then you can go to user data modules, find your game icons.net. Say you want a black transparent, white transparent, white with a background. Um, go for, yeah, if you click up here, it'll show you a preview image. And then go for something like. Bird house, family house, green house, dog house. No, if you go to library. No, it doesn't matter. I go for one of the abstract ones just to illustrate what it looks like. So you would then have that sort of um, flexibility of different icons. You can knock yourself out with that. It's good fun. Um, there's no music in included, but of course, music plays a big role. If you look at the character sheets, every character has got a favorite song. Um, the way I did this when we played around the table was basically I went to 1984's charts in Sweden. I had looked up a lot of the songs, I downloaded them onto Spotify list. I then went through all the characters' favorite songs, included them as well, put it on shuffle and let it play throughout the session and um, whenever the favorite song from one of the players came on they got a plus one for everything while it was playing so it was their bonus song uh, that went down quite nicely quite well so um yeah just to finish this up there's no combat in this game really to speak of there's conflict but not really or trouble as they call it but there's no combat so we don't even need to look at that and uh, these are not battle maps as i said Character sheets are very simple. There's no items. The uh, journals are good. It's all there. Yeah. Um, there's no rollable tables. There's no music. So it makes it really quick to review this thing. The last thing I wanted to briefly show you is my things from the flood. The variant of it. So it takes a moment to load because there's something in there, a few more assets in it, I think. Not quite sure why is that oh, that's so slow. But yeah, it looks very similar. I have also imported the um the base kit into this, but you'll see that that was my my cover for this game. Things from the flood or flash and steel. Oh I didn't show you the, the rolling from the character sheet, but that's really cool module. You can do that on here. So I created this, and this is where, and I'll show you that probably on this map here. You know how I don't like padding usually, but sometimes when you need it, sometimes it makes sense. So on this map here, for example, I've got padding because I've got these tiles here. Go to the tile browser, you can see that they're tiles. Um, and these are items that they might see or find in this location. So I would start off with them hidden, and once they find their players find them, I would just reveal them. But you can see if I put it over here, it's fully visible. And if I push it off now, you can see the frame maybe just about it. Yeah, and then it disappears. It cuts it off at the bottom. And that is where the padding is coming in. So I made this extra big to show you this padding thing. So if I stuck it on like this, yeah, then you can see why I would use padding at some point. Make this sort of storyboard. 
or evidence board, whatever you want to call it. Right, I wanted to briefly show you my map as well. This map looks slightly different because things from the flood are set a few years later. But this is what I meant earlier about the key places. Yeah, these were places mentioned by the characters in the character creation. Their, their kids had been evacuated from there, so just to make that memorable for the new players, I put those on. And then these down here were um, sites that were important for that session for their um, discovery, their investigations. So Stenhamra is here. We've got the Primal Force Therapy Center up there. We've got the Eye of Sauron for the cooling tower. Yeah, we've got something else up there. So these were sites that the players were aware of when I shared them, or if I needed to know them, but they shouldn't, then I didn't share them. Right, and I wanted to show you the characters. So this this is an actual character. And here you can see that it picked up the things from the flood um, modification, right? I think if you want to do that, you need to load this first. Yeah, before you load in the, the other ones. We've got a different age range, up to 19. We've got the different um, problem rather than, than um, sorry, problem was there before. We've got this shame rather than pride. And we've got, I think that's it. I think that's the only difference. So to show you the rolling. This is probably the cleanest um, year zero than I've ever seen implementation. So we've got body, sneak. Yeah, you want to sneak. That's your body plus your, your attribute. You just roll on it. Yeah, you can tweak it a little bit. The pendant is important for sneaking. I don't think it is. You roll it. Yeah, no successes. You re-roll it. And we've got some, some successes. Oh, I did some dice so nice on this. So they flame when they are um, good. Of course, if you re-roll something, you will have to take a condition. That's not automated. And if you then roll again, You'll see that I can only have minus one, so that's implemented as well. One die fewer. And in the things from the flood, let me just check this. Um, nice so nice should really work on this. Nice so nice is on there. So module setting dice so nice. Nice priest sets tears from the loop. That's the yellow. I think that's why I went away from it, because I didn't want the yellow dice. Roll again. <laughs> Just move this time. And then you can see you get the, the tails from the loop. Uh, the crafter or oh, Rix Energy. Um, simple. Right. Any questions, put them in the chat, as always. Yeah, if you want to know more, let me know what it is you wanted more. Uh, no more if you want to see different systems, different aspects of this system, or if you have questions like how would you go about this or that or the other, please let me know. And leave a, a like if you like it, leave a subscribe if you like it really, if you really like it, and if you really, really like it, you can buy me coffee details under the video. Thank you very much, and see you in the next one.